14 podcast presented by Sports Interaction, your homegrown sports book, Bet Local. And if you are listening to this show right now, you are four days away, three days away, whatever. There is regular season Toronto Blue Jays baseball right in front of us this Thursday. Season preview podcast is here. If you can't tell, I am juiced the hell up, Avery. I cannot wait. Uh, you're a baseball fan. This is the most excited for every single team you could possibly be. <laughs> is this week right here? Everyone zero and zero. Everyone theoretically, except a couple teams, have a chance to win a World Series. Uh, this is uh, I'm I'm just giddy to get going. You know, spring training finally starts to weigh on you. It you're so invested in the opening spring training games because you finally have baseball back, and then you realize at some point it doesn't really matter, and so you start to the interest levels fall off a little bit, but yeah. we're back. Yeah. We're and, back. And I mean, what a beautiful day for some news. Congratulations to our guys, Ernie Clement, David Schneider for making the opening day roster for the Toronto blue Jays. Couldn't happen to two better guys. And then as well, Danny burgers, Danny burgers, <laughs> cracks the roster. Uh, what a trio to make this club. You'll love to see it. So congratulations to those guys, and I mean, fuck, man. Ernie's earned it. Uh, David Schneider's look great in the field. Uh, in left field, that catch he made still blows he, my fucking He texted mind. us. He texted yeah. us something smart. I'm saving all the hits for the season, and I believe That's him. what he did say. He did say that. Correct. So uh, it's just, yeah, buy the stock now. I love it. And it's it's uh, it's it's going to be awesome seeing these guys come off the bench. Are Ernie and David going to be getting a 1,000 at-bats a month? No, but. They're going to be those guys that come off the bench that could be defensive replacement or uh, backups. It's it's going to be uh, interesting to see how they use them this year. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, they're not Vlad Bo on the importance level based on how many at-bats they're going to get. Yeah. But I think this is a very good vibes team, and that starts with the bench with some, some great – three great locker room guys on that bench right there to start off the season. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's go into the season stuff here, man. I mean, we're here. Uh, we have all the hard work. Um, this is the roster we have going on to opening day. We don't, we still don't know a lot of the pitching stuff yet. Yeah. Th- the pitching this stuff, is... I'll pr- I'm assuming they'll announce Monday, maybe Tuesday. Yeah. So, so we just... can assume Mitch White will be there. I think they're waiting for the pitching solely based off the fact that they want to see how Gossman's session goes on Monday. Right. Uh, yeah. Makes if he's sense. But... Fine. If, if he's just... able to be the fifth guy, right. Like give him a couple extra days rest, maybe going. Houston, is it? it yeah, favorite? Houston second. Yeah, if uh, he's able to go for that Houston start, the fifth one right after Bowden, then you kind of just restart that rotation from there. So uh, I think he'll be fine for that. I'm hoping so. All the reports I've seen is that he's doing well. So I guess we can kind of just piggyback it off of that. Mitch White will make the team and potentially uh, Gossman will be that fifth guy. Yeah, so they'll have to be they'll have to be some roster moves made because Daniel Vogelback's on the team, right? Or no, because yeah. Ernie fucked me. I don't know. I've I've got this all fucked up. There has to be a roster move made at least uh, because of the hitter side of this. Uh, Ricky Tiedemann, we also got that news of he's not out of the running to be on the team, which is pretty interesting as well. I think that means another roster move. Well, but, this is my thing, Avery. Um, I'm sorry for 40 man people. I'm. It's all scrambling. Uh, yeah, I'm not right really now. quite familiar with that stuff. But this is my thing with this, right? You're kind of in a win now window where it's you have like put your best guys out there, put your best guys out there. Is that going to diminish the Ricky T development? I'm not sure. And I, you made a pretty good argument in our group chat where you said he does miss middle a decent amount. Like he'll he'll throw a decent amount of like cock shot fastballs or cock shot breaking pitches that maybe guys in the major leagues will spit on. Uh, but. I wouldn't hate it. It'd kind of be a ballsy move from Ross, but that's what you kind of do when your job's kind of, I'm not going to say it's in jeopardy, but it's for sure. It's for sure in jeopardy. No playoff wins. You kind of just got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. So it it is interesting if you want to think about of a development standpoint, which I don't really look at that much. Um, An often injured guy so far in his career. It's just how it is. There's no bullshit. That's just how it's been. Wasting rehab bullets every time or he's fresh now he's as good as he'll yeah. be being in triple a how how much better are you gonna get we saw it with alec manoa the same kind of thing jr and i's first ever fight was him saying alec manoa needed more time to develop in triple a 
I think it's it's more a development thing. Is in, in your if you're in double A, if you're in triple A, that well, triple A you don't really have you have fringe big league guys, right? Like I think double A is where a majority of like the really really good prospects are. Usually, usually yeah. that's how that goes. So yeah, the, he's ready to make the leap if they're just like, hey, he's going to triple A no matter what. So I don't think it's a crazy idea how they do service time manipulation or they try and get the draft pick to have him up instead. That'll be interesting to see because those have changed uh, recently. But then you see guys like Jackson Holiday not make it out. So what are your th thoughts on them kind of going the Bowden Francis route with Ricky T? Maybe he just comes out of the pen a couple times just to kind of get his feet wet in the big leagues as like a long relief guy. And then the, uh, the thought has never the thought has never even crossed my mind, to be honest. I thought he'd be used more opener style than middle guy because you can I think you can plot your back end better. If you know how the first guy is going to go, usually okay. if you have, say, Bassett goes two, then it's a scramble. What the fuck are we about to do for the rest of the game? Because you never expect that to happen. Don't want that to happen. Um, but if you have Ricky T, it's like, hey, he's three innings to start. We can piece that together after and have a plan. Usually it doesn't always go to plan, but I would all, I think based on what, I'm thinking right now. I have no prior knowledge. I'd I'd go opener style with him. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of flexible, but I like I said, I think this all weighs on the back of Kevin Gossman. But Mitch White looked incredible on uh, Saturday. He pitched against the Red Sox. So it's not like you can go kind of anywhere wrong. And I mean, Mitch White, he's gonna have to make the team uh, unless or they're gonna just lose him to another team. They're gonna get he's gonna get picked up off waivers pretty pretty quickly. So it's kind of in Mitch White's hands. To make he ha kind of has to make the team, so um, I don't know where they're gonna go here with this, though. I mean, Eric Swanson, I'm not quite sure. I haven't really texted him or wanted to see how he's doing because I don't want to ask guys that when they're when they're injured, but that's kind of in the air. No one really knows what's going on with him. Romano, they said, should be good for opening day, I believe, right? I saw that in an article, so um, it's kind of weird like this. It's in the air, I guess we'll know 100% more tomorrow, right? Yeah, I mean, every day we get closer, we'll we'll know more, yeah. Um, but no, man, it's the pitching depth is going to be tested, and the only way this team does really well is if the offense picks them up. The yeah, the pitchers when they're healthy are going to be good. Um, it's we're starting on the wrong foot from the health side already, so yes. it can be, it could be worse though. It could be way way worse. It could be the Yankees, right? You could have yes. Rodon, who's just he's not injured, he's just dog shit. Uh, <laughs> Stroman, who's uh going the Nestor Cortez looks terrible, so. You can't really, I mean, it could be way worse, right? It could yes. be way worse for this team. And you win the games by scoring more runs than the other team. And that can help from the offense. Yeah. So I'm excited. We get to talk real baseball. Um, hopefully op after opening day, we will do a 162 and 0 or 0 and 162 podcast. Or no, 1 and 161 and 1. That'll be the name. Oh, that's what you want? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just because that'll trigger people. So 161 and 1 or 162 and 0. That's the two podcast names. So Okay. I like that uh, again, too. But that's the we finally this. get to talk about a real game. It's I'm so incredibly it's excited. Awesome. Um it's awesome. And again, if you you don't know, 595 Bay Street, St. Louis Bar and Grill, 330 watch if party. If you are not there at this and you live in the Ontario region <laughs> or area, sorry, you are potentially dead to me. I will say that. I want the showing to be great. Sports Interaction is giving away jerseys, tickets. Like, there's tons of stuff to be interactive there. It is going to be absolutely electric. I promise. Me and Avery will be there. We'll do whatever. We'll get after it if need be. Probably will be because the Friday's off. But I am – let's just show up for the Gate 14, boys, all right? This yeah. is a big event. This is our first event that we've kind of done here with the watch party. So the more you show up, the more events we can kind of do like this. So uh, this is very meaningful to us. Yeah, I think it'll be fun, you know, see the people – I don't know what they'll have us doing. I don't know if we're we're on the mic. We are. We're. We're. we're it's okay. like a live stream. Hell yeah! So if you guys watch oh, yeah. that, just show up. Uh, I don't think there's an age limit. No, there's not an age limit. So no, just come on down. Let's watch watch them ball together. The Jays, four straight opening day wins. Really going for five? I forgot they won that Barrios game. They got yes. Okay, Texas. They did win yes. that one. I forgot they won that game. Okay, yeah, um, four straight opening day wins. I was Three. scrolling. I was scrolling in the car while that happened. So. Uh, yeah, I'm, that might not totally be true, but for sure, two wins in a row. I'm pretty sure it's four wins in a row opening day. You could be right. I think yeah. you're right. Uh, but yeah, let's go into the stuff, man. Season prediction.
Season All right, prediction. so we had some. Okay, what were the really bad ones we've had from the past two seasons? Okay, I said. Oh, Baltimore... first one two year two years ago, Jr. said the Yankees can't hit, and they proceeded yes. to be to be the best baseball team ever. They they proceeded to have the best offense in baseball. Uh, yes. He said that, but that was a kind of a Mickey Mouse run they had. Let's let's call it what it is. For but sure, yeah. He did say that. Uh, I said last year the Baltimore Orioles wouldn't make the playoffs, and they weren't going to be good. I said they'd um, go under their win total too. Under their win total last yeah. year. I, I, yeah, we've said tons of stupid shit though. Like we, we said, will, and we will continue to say stupid. I shit. I think we said Manoa will be a Cy Young front runner last year or something like that. I don't remember. We said uh, you a said lot of... you said he they'd be the best pitcher. He'd be the best. Oh, pitcher. best pitcher in the AL East. Um, at least for the team. But that's okay. I might have said that. Yeah, I, I might have said. I've said a lot of dumb shit. I'd like to forget the dumb things that I say. I uh, remember. I like to remember the good things we said. Like yes. Uh, like I said Reed. Gosman would be the best pitcher. Like, yeah, but Gosman won the Cy Young last year, even though he's a runner-up. I mean, that was a good take. So credit to us for that. All but, right. Uh, so yeah. a lot of these things, you can bet on sports interaction. Yes. And a lot of them you can. I will but let you know. More, yeah, it's more like not to shove the betting stuff down your throat, but this is just like this. We did we did this exact same thing last year for the new 100%. Listeners, so, yeah. No, no, no. If you, if you find, like, if you're so firmly on a stance, Put your money where your mouth is and see if you can make some money off of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, the win total from Sports Interaction. I didn't look on projection sites for this one. 87 and a half wins for our Toronto Blue Jays. Johnny, over or under 87 and a half wins? I'm going to say over, okay? And let and just let, hear me out because this is going to be a clip put on TikTok. The Jays will win more than 87 and a half games. They're going to be in the lower 90 range, 90 to 91. Call me delusional. This team won 89 games last year with the worst offense I have ever seen in my life, okay? All the guys that were supposed to be big dogs were not big dogs for this team last year, and they won 89 games. Vladdy put up one war. Uh, Bobochet was obviously good. George Springer struggled. Dalton Varsho struggled. Kirk struggled. And this team still somehow won 89 games. Or This year, they're returning the exact same pitching staff, uh, same bullpen, and some may even argue they got a little bit better. Like that Bowden France having another year under his belt could potentially get better. I think this team, with how good they are defensively, how good they could be potentially with these bounce backs and how good this pitching staff is, is a 89 to 92 win team in 2024. Okay. I will take the over. I think they are an 89 win team again. But the way they get to 89 wins is a complete flip flop from last year. Uh, really? It's the injury thing is just kind of scared me early. So I, if they're all healthy, this team is the upside's more than that, no doubt in my mind. So I'll say they win, but I think like 88, 89 is like the perfect number for this team. Uh, the Yankees early struggles. Hopefully the Orioles are going to win the first 10 games they play. If you want to bet race to 10 wins, I think the O's are a really good one. Uh, Who do they have? It's really bad. I forget, but it, I, okay. it's, it's hilariously bad to start yeah. the year. Uh, so I will go over wins. I don't think it's a crazy number that is off, uh, but I think they get to 89 wins again in a totally different fashion. So you think they get 89 on the dot, eh? Yeah. Okay. I think they're back there. Okay. Where do the next one, the Blue Jays finish in the AL East? Hmm. I'm going to say second. Second. I think it goes... I think that Yankees injury, man, I, I think that's what's going to screw them. I really do. Like, Judge isn't fully healthy going into the year. DJ LeMayhew, is, um, they said it'd be a miracle for him to make opening day. Uh, Rodon's a question mark. I, I truly do think, I think it goes Orioles, Blue Jays, Yankees. I, I don't think this Rays team is going to be good. I will get old takes exposed for this probably at a certain point. I do not think this Tampa Bay Rays team is going to be good. I don't know how I can look at that roster and think that. I don't. Yeah. The thing you believe in when you look at this Rays roster, this iteration of it, is you believe in the past Rays team that they can make bad players good. Not even yes. bad players. Players you don't really know about. Uh, a lot of felt like Lynn Sanity runs for some of their guys that are you'd hope would regress uh, as a Blue Jays fan. So I don't hate that take at all. I... It's plus 300. I'll have the Jays to finish second in the AL East. I feel the same way, but I'm going to go O's, Blue Jays, Yankees, Rays, Red Sox. 
Okay. That is going to be my order. Okay, so, yeah, I, I can agree with that. The Yankees are such a question mark. They're such a wild card to me. Uh, I, I don't know what to really expect from this team. I will say this. That Gill guy, is that his name? Luis yep. Gill? Yep. Uh, he actually looks really good, I will say, but he doesn't know where the ball is going, but he throws like 99. Uh, but, yeah, I, I can see the Orioles again repeating. I mean, they're the Orioles. They're pitching like they're, they're the greatest white boy team of all time. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, 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 second place makes the most sense in my mind. Second or third. I think they make the, I think it's going to have to be another wild card again because it's the AL East and that's just what the AL East does. But, um, I'm potentially thinking a home wild card game this year. Nice. I yeah. I legitimately think the range of outcomes is winning the division to coming fifth place. It's so, it is that's so the AL East though. That's for every team pretty much besides the, besides the Red Sox. Yeah. Yeah, in the in the East for sure. Yeah. That's why it's so interesting. It felt easier to kind of look at last year, yeah. um, but it it is tough. So playoffs, you have the Jays making the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, I'm I'm not going to say the no to that question. The Jays will make the playoffs this year. I, I really do think that. I do have the Toronto Blue Jays making. It the would playoffs. really test my fandom if they didn't. I will say that it would really. It would really test my fandom if they didn't make the playoffs, okay? It would. Yeah. Okay. So, we both said yes. What stage of elimination to do the Blue Jays make it to? ALDS. Fuck it. Lose in the divisional series? Yeah. I also have lose in the divisional series. That's a you can bet that as well, plus 400, lose in the yeah. divisional series. That's fair. Um they get a play. They get their wild card wins. They find a way. They exercise yeah. the demons from Seattle. Exercise the demons. But, like, from but just piggybacking off of what you said, Avery is, is like I could see a scenario where this team loses in the LDS. I could see a team scenario this team loses in the ALCS in like six games. Like this, it it literally is all going to boil down to what the bats do. We know the pitching is going to be good. We know the hitting is going to be or the the fielding is going to be good. The defense. It is literally. On the shoulders of Kirk, Vladdy, Varsho, Springer. That is it. It's all on their shoulders. Agreed. Yeah, couldn't agree more with you there, Johnny. Okay, our next one. Do Mark Shapiro, Ross Atkins, and John Schneider all have their current jobs in 2025? Yeah. I think the season would have to go really bad. Like, really bad. Like, I'm talking no playoffs, never serious, 84 wins, 83-win team. There is no way those dudes come back. I don't think so, at least. I don't, like, how do you sell it to a fan base that hasn't had playoff success in nine, in eight years, or nine years, I guess, technically, or eight years, uh, at the end of the season? It's hard to sell it when you've spent all the money that you've spent, been up, been in the upper tax threshold, I believe, the CB, or whatever it's called, but it's hard to justify to a fan base and especially to an ownership group uh, that you are deserving of your job when you haven't done really anything uh, and spent this like seventh most top 10 most amount of money in baseball. It's, it's impossible to sell that. Yeah, I agree. If they miss the playoffs, I think at least two or three of them are out of their position, make the playoffs. They do the same thing they do this year. Fill yeah. the seats, get people in there. Rogers is happy with that. They make the playoffs. That and that free agent class next year is really good. I mean, it, it's nothing to shake a stick at. There's there's a lot of guys you can. No, and to they've to. they've shown their ability to sign top guys. Yeah, this year didn't show that, but they were in the running for them. Um, so like I trust I trust those guys to make the right pitch. They've shown that people will choose Toronto. Uh, so I'm like I'm happy with them in the free agent market. Yeah, for sure. Okay, the best Toronto Blue Jays starting pitcher. I think because of the Kevin Gossman potentially coming into camp here a little bit banged up, I'm going to go on a limb and say Jose Brios. I think oh. Jose Brios is going to be special. I, I want to do the same thing as well. I'm going to go the easy cop-out answer. I'm going to go Kevin Gossman because I think we saw he's a top three Cy Young voting guy. When he when he's on, but just hearing Bassett talk about Barrios and like Bowden and Mitch, <laughs> he looks good. It's it's uh, 
it's gonna be it's gonna be a big year for uh La Machina. So I, I could definitely see him being the best one. This is the thing about the team. Almost every pitcher on this staff, you could make the argument could be the best one on this team. Like Kevin Gossman, obviously. Uh Chris Bassett, 200 innings last year, lowest DRA of his career. You can make a case for him being the best pitcher on this team. Jose Barrios, I mean, the numbers are there last year, bounce back season his entire career as well. And then you say Coochie was like a top 10 pitcher in baseball after the all-star break. You can make a case for all of these guys. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go a little bit off the beaten path, and I'm going to say Jose Brios, though. Nice. I like that. Um, Kevin Gosman, just an elite strikeout guy. You need that in the AL East. There's way more variance to pitching if you, um, you're trusted to put the ball in play instead of striking people out. Um, that's why the projection systems will always be different for contact pitchers than guys who strike out a ton. Uh, so I will go with Kevin Gosman, the best bullpen arm. I had a cop out, stupid answer for this too. I'm being a little, little bitch about it. Best bullpen arm, Jimmy Garcia. I like that. He look. I, I will again. I know it's spring, but that's all we can kind of talk it based off of. He has looked insane this spring. Jimmy Garcia. Like Jimmy, Jimmy's got really good numbers. All around, and it seemed like an unlucky season last year. The left on base percentage was really low for his career as well. Um, he is, I have an answer for him later. Jordan Romano is an elite bullpen arm, he's the closer for a reason. I hate that my best starter and best bullpen arm are two guys who are hurt to start this season, and that hurts the staff as well. But Jordan Romano is an elite arm. Uh, yeah. we, I don't think we appreciate him enough. Well, the fans don't. I, I think the people that like watch every single day in day out know how good that he is understand that romano is like one of the best closing pitchers in baseball and that's not a hot take by any means not even yeah. close to being a hot take the best everyday position player boba <laughs> like okay boba an easy answer but i think where you're probably leaning based off of the expression you just made dalton varsho right I'm this not good. No, no, no. He's good though. This I is love. like a four-win player that it looks really comfortable at the plate with his new stance. You can make the argument he's going to be the one of the most important players on this team next year if he puts up like a four WAR and hits like two seventy with like twenty five bombs. Like you, you can make that argument very easily. Yeah, hundred percent. The best defense in the big leagues. Guy who can hit home runs. He's a very important piece. I did this last season. I'm going to do this as long as he's a Toronto Blue Jay. The best hitter on this team is going to be Vladimir Guerrero Jr. <laughs> okay. Is that pandering? Is that a pander pick for the you-know-who? To who? The guy that ripped it. The, not the guy that ripped into me, but you know who I'm talking about. No, 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 no. I mean, let's not say that what Vladdy did in 2021 wasn't the best thing we've ever seen with our four oh, fucking God. eyes. If he, could re- if he could just three quarters of the way replicate that. So I hate that other people do this. It's the, is Vladdy going to be more serious this season? This is where I want to take things. Let's start talking about money. If Vladimir Guerrero Jr. puts up another stinker of a season, we're going to be talking about Cody Bellinger-esque bullshit little contract he's going to have to deal with if he has a good year next year. Because Well, we learned that owners aren't going to pay guys. Like, if he puts up another one war, he's going to literally get Cody Bellinger money. He's the billions of dollars that Vlad was going to get have consistently gone down. This is a money-making year for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So let's think a little more business. He got a little more. He looks locked in at the plate right now. He was really good last year, too. In spring. In spring training and the start of the year. And then the wrist injury happened. So I think we get to a place where he knows that his damage is not done at the bottom of the zone. And it's easier said than done. You don't see your heat maps when you're up there at the plate seeing 99. You see a ball coming in at you that you think you can hit. Yeah. Oh, shit, it's at the bottom of the zone, and it's going the other way. I still make contact, but it's like, okay. Matt Hag is in there. I don't know how much he's in his ear, Vladdy's ear. So we know There's no way he's talking. Vladdy's, <laughs> Vladdy's, Vladdy, bro. Vladdy's uncles were in his ear, all that type of thing. Yeah. yeah. He was at the player development camp for all offseason pretty much, right? He was in there. Um, or the complex. I believe in Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I yeah. believe in a special power hitter, generational, maybe not anymore. One of the best we've ever seen as a Toronto Blue Jay. I'm hoping for. Sure. I think Vladdy can do it, man. I I yeah. think I think there's a place for a bounce back from Vladdy. That's fair. I 
I I'm 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 in your boat. I'm in your boat. I think Vladdy will have a big year this year. But he, him and Bo, and I guess Springer because Springer had the most at bats for the team last year. Dictate how this offense goes. Yes, yeah, so they start it. And Kirk, you can make the case for Kirk being the most important hitter on this team too, man. With uh, the Jano injury to start the season, but uh, yeah, I Vladdy is a good pick, but that's a very chalk pick. That's why I kind of went. I didn't really go off the green. I said Boba Shep, but. Uh, those are two. Guys, those are the two best players in the teams. There's, I mean, and if this team is going to be good, they have to be good. Yeah, the bench, the best bench bat of the Toronto Blue Jays have. This is something that's always fluid. Obviously, if anyone said David Schneider was going to be that last year, you're a liar. He didn't say that. Um, but I'll go first. Yeah, I, I wanted to do a little more pandering and say like Joey Votto, but. I'm not going to do that. Ernie just keeps up the contact shit, and it's just a really good bench bat. He fits the bench role. Him and Vogelbach fit it the best, I think. Yeah. Um, I think Ernie keeps up the contact. Uh, the contact rates are high, taps into some of the power, can play important defensive positions. Had him playing left field uh, last week, so they're just trying to be able to get him in everywhere because they believe in the contact so much. They traded Espinal away for him. Uh, he will have a bunch of bench at bats, so I'll go. Yeah, I'll go that's Ernie. a great pick, Abe. That's a really good pick. I, Ernie will probably be the chalk one as well because he's the guy that's coming into camp. Kind of, would you say he's bench bat one right now? It, it's matchups based. Yeah, obviously. But would kind you say of, he's the most trustworthy one on the bench right now? I'd probably say him, right? Like opening day, you probably hit Ernie over Davis in a situation. Yeah. I would think yeah. so. And then if it's a righty Vogel backs in there, if he's not playing yeah, or, or whoever else is yeah, uh, going to be sure. there. It's going to be, a, yeah, I, I'm going to have to agree with you on Ernie, but uh, I really think I, I I'm going to say Joey Votto. I, I think am, it's going to happen. I'm the Votto Kool-Aid man, but I has Votto ever shown that he's able to be a bench bat and like be able to just play once every three or four days. I don't know. But I'm going to say Joey Votto just solely based on the fact that I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. And uh, I believe he's going to be a massive part of the 20 2024 Toronto Blue Jays. All right. Um, the biggest surprise player this season, good or bad? Freak. IKF. You think I think so? IKF is going to open, uh, open a couple eyes this year. I really do. I Again, we're talking about spring. He has looked pretty good at the plate this spring. And defensively, he is really, really good defensively. I mean, yeah, this guy is... Uh, is uh, He's we're not going to be losing that much of a step compared to the Matt Chapman stuff. Will we be losing a step? Sure. Matt Chapman's a platinum glover, but IKF can still stick it at third, man. He can still play at third. Really good defender. I'm saying he's going to be the surprise guy this year that a lot of a lot of fans are like, okay, all right. I, I didn't think IKF would be as good as he is uh this year. All right. My surprise player, you said best reliever, Jimmy Garcia comes back and is a fucking stud in the bullpen. Um he is my surprise in a good way. Uh, I, I think he has electric stuff. Tough season last year. He gets back to top of the bullpen ranks in uh, reliability by the time this thing ends, I think. That's the next okay. one. A mid-season pickup for the Toronto Blue Jays. I have an answer. I can let Juan you think Soto on. from the Yankees? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. I, I'm going to go against your thinking. Although I don't think it's totally wrong. Uh, I think the midseason pickup is going to be Willie Adamas because the IKF thing doesn't go well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, he's That's not fair. a third. He's not a third baseman, but he has a great arm. I think he could play the corner. Uh, the Brewers. It all depends how that goes. Young team. I still like a couple of their pieces. Uh, but I think the midseason pickup is a deal for Willie Adamas. I think Brent Rooker. Outfielder. Okay. Power bat uh, that can absolutely launch baseballs into orbit. I do not think this team makes any significant moves at the uh, deadline because of how many question marks with the free agency stuff they have. But uh, I do think I do think Brent Rooker would probably be the only guy that I can. I mean, that's a lazy answer, but. I don't really see this team in general making any moves at the deadline, no right. matter what. 
any player on the active roster that gets traded away. Uh, I could see a Trevor Richards deal happening. Okay, and my, my answer was Nate Pearson. I think he just... It just didn't work out here, right? Yeah, it might, might, might just get lost a little bit. But we could also see Nate being really great. So I think like an Adamas deal, Nate Pearson goes the other way. Yeah, Nate. that's that's a good one. I like that, Ave. Um, but if Nate's great here, we want him on the team. Uh, but the bullpen's so so full at this point. Uh, I think he might get lost. Um, I don't remember what we've ever said for any of these ones in previous podcasts. Um, the funniest moment of this season that you think might happen. I think Kikuchi pinch runs. I want it so fucking bad. Like, okay, that or Ernie Clement pitches again. Okay. I I did a little video at work. Uh, Ernie Clement was of was three people to throw a knuckleball in the big leagues last year, and he's thrown one three straight years, I think. It Let was, him eat. Let it, him eat. Last season, it was Matt Waldron from the Padres, who's an actual pitcher. Luke Maley from the Reds, Blue Jays legend, who threw a knuckleball, and Ernie Clement. And Ernie had the second best knuckleball in baseball. I texted him that. I told him how good it was. Uh, so that's that is a pretty funny one. What's yeah? Where do you see? Uh, where does he pinch run? What city do you see it happening in? It has to be the Rogers Center. It fucking erupts. <laughs> like imagine the scenes. If you say Kikuchi comes off that bench with the helmet on. Okay, do you think they put him in so that video of him in Japan is a first to third, first and third double steal? Do you think they put him in at third base or first base it for that? Would be scenes if they did that. I don't know what they're going to do. I just want him on the base pass more than I need fucking air to breathe. <laughs> okay, I like that. Uh, my funniest moment of the season is Joey Votto walks away from baseball and starts a podcast like halfway through the year. <laughs> So, you're it's, pro- so negativity's back. You're probably got his downfall. I say he finishes this year, does what he does with the Blue Jays, like hits 270, maybe 260. That'd be sick. And then uh, just walks away into the sunset, retires a Blue Jay. Or retires a Red, signs a 10-day contract. Okay, I like that too. Um, does anyone get suspended this season? And if so, uh, who? Addison Barger for steroids? <laughs> no, don't say that. Uh, no, I don't know, man. I... I could see a potential, like, this team has no fight, guys. You know, like, I, I don't see a potential bench-clearing brawl incident on this team. There's too many good guys on this team, right? Okay, but like, say you have a thrown-at-a-player incident. Again, I, I the only guy I can really see potentially fighting with a guy is Bassett. Because he's a competitor. Like, if someone does something or says something in the media about him and he just throws at him. I think, I I think, you're, I think you're missing an easy one for that. Romano? Even easier, brother. Alec Manoa. Know. Is he gonna fucking play? I don't know what this guy's <laughs> doing, man. I like Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, I guess Alec Manoa. Yeah. Okay. I that's have fair. a Pete Walker suspension at some point this year. Yes. That that that's free though. That yeah. I mean that 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 happens at least once a year, anyways. All right. Let's get to some player things. Ricky Tiedemann has his zips projection. 79 and a half big league innings this year. Over or under 79 and a half big league innings for Ricky Tiedemann? Over. Nice. I, like I think it's over because I think this team decides to go full throttle. I'm not to take the Red Sox uh, jingle there, but <laughs> this decides to decides to be like, all right, we're all in now. Call up Ricky T. Let all the big dogs eat now. Let's now now we fucking go. No more fucking around. Uh yeah. I could see Ricky T even making like two appearances in AAA and potentially getting called up. I really do. I I I I have such high praise for Ricky because of how good he has looked against big league hitting. He's looked really good against big league hitting. Yeah, okay, I'll go under. Uh, he just hasn't thrown that many innings in his career. I'd be. I wonder what's saying the... over because I'm an optimist. I think for that's sure. A very I would unreal. love. I would love for him to do that. I think he'd be a sick piece. I think it'd be happens. very. It's very unrealistic, but I'll say over just to kind of. Just because it's ball. Yeah. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Home runs over under 33 and a half over. You can bet this as well. I think I think Vladdy just goes nuclear this year. I, I'll say it. I don't care if you call me positive. Po- Vladdy will go nuclear Luke, nuclear this year. He will. 
I'm over. I I'd, I'd put money on this one over 33 and a half home runs. I I love it, man. We get we get the power back from Vlad. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Over under wins above replacement uh what they are projected for for our position player group. Starting Bo Bichette, over under 4.3 wins above replacement. Over. Over. This is the year of Boba Shet. Every year is the year of Boba Shet, but that defense, which it makes up a substantial margin of war, right, uh, has been so good for Boba Shet, in which is why I think he has his best defensive season as well as really take steps forwards offensively, if that's even possible. But he's such a good hitter, such a pure hitter. I think the base running should help as well. Some stolen bases should help for him. I'll go over 4.3 wins for Boba Shet. Okay, second, second highest projected wins above replacement, Alejandro Kirk. Wow. 3.4 wins over under. I'm going to say under. I'm going to say I still think he is really good, going to be really good at the plate, but I think uh, Jano's power numbers will at a certain point exceed the the how bad the Toronto Blue Jays need Kirk, and they will play Jansen more than they play Kirk. So I don't think it's going to be – I think it's going to be harder for him to reach 3.4 war. Okay. I think the defense is so good. The bat bounces back. I'll go over 3.4 wins. Next, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. projected 3.2 fan graphs wins above replacement. He's got to do it in a different way because the defense hurt him so bad last year as well. Uh, I'll go over 3.2. I'll go over for Vladi, just praying and hoping that he has. I mean, he'd have to technically 3.5 exit. To go over what he did last year, but I'm on the Vladdy train this year. I think he's going to be really good, so I'll take over for that. David Schneider, three point one wins above replacement. This is a weird one. I I have to go under based on the playing time. Yeah, I concerns. think he's kind of clogged there with like where he's going to play, especially with with Biggio getting a decent amount of roughs. I know it's kind of a different bat, but uh. I'm going to have to go under here because I don't know what the Jays are going to be doing with him specifically. I think yeah. he's going to be a good bench bat, obviously, but I don't know what the Jays are going to do with him. Against like, ri- against righties, he might not play at this point. It might just be a lefty thing based on yeah. where they have and him. That's, and that's hard to accumulate a 3.1 war when you're only playing against lefties. And most of your, your innings might be in left field where harder – uh, to whack, uh, rack up better defensive stats, I think, yeah, for him in left field than exactly at second base. Yeah. George Springer, 2.9 wins above replacement, over or over, under. over for Springsy. I'm uh on the nuke train on the over. Is this as yeah. well? This is the year of George Springer. Let's last uh, last year he was very, very bad offensively, like. Very, very bad. Uh, this year, he looks more lean. I saw BK talk about that in the chat. I, I'm taking the over on George Springer uh, war this year. I'll do it. Fuck yeah. it. Uh, BK and Zoobs had a good episode talking about Springer. I loved. Uh, I'm also on this over. Next, we have Dalton Varsho. His fan graphs wins were replacement. Projections have him at 2.3 wins. I think this is the nuke bomb of the century Hiroshima this is the easiest over ever we we didn't really have to go into this Avery this is just an over it's it's an over for me too I I love what Varsha could do he could fucking rack that up himself just playing defense pretty much don't even give him a bat Barry Bond style I think he could put that up moving on Jano 2.3 wins by replacement as well over over he was on pace to put up some special numbers last year man and we know the Jano thing is hey he doesn't He's not on the field as much as we love him to be. Uh, he's also in let's make money this year season yeah. as he's a pending free agent, right? Uh, so, Jano, I have over 2.3 wins of replacement. Yeah. Move on. Kevin Kiermeyer, 2.0. Two wins. The power numbers this spring are insane for Kiermaier. I, I like. I think he said that last year. He's kind of really trying to focus more on power coming into this season, so... Because he said last year his thing was, I don't care if I hit zero home runs, right? That was the yes. quote. Yeah. And now he said, fuck it, we ball. Let's hit for let's hit for some power. So I'm gonna say over. He's so good defensively. He could do that by himself in the outfield. I know. I'm gonna go under. I think the injuries get to him this year. Okay. The, the turf monster finally 
he's talked about years. Hey, I don't want to play on turf. Hey, I don't want to play on turf. Comes back and he's still that's a on good turf. under to bet. I would probably take that under. Just if he plays a full season, it's like he's so good defensively. It's like how the fuck do you like you can't take the under on that? But yeah, that's that's a good point, Avery. Justin Turner, one point seven wins above replacement. Uh over. I mean, I. Well, the thing with him is actually I'll probably say under because he's not. I don't think he's gonna be playing the field that much. That's why I was gonna take his under. Like, he'd have to have such a good season like last year at the plate. He'd have to rake at the plate to have that. So that's a pretty good line there. One point seven. I'm I'm gonna take the under there. I think he was one point seven again last year too. But he so, played the field a decent amount, right? Yeah, a decent amount. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll check that later. But I'm I'm the under on Justin Turner one point seven. Ernie okay. Clement. 1.4 wins above replacement. Uh, over. I think how good he is defensively and potential ability to be able to sneak into that lineup if he just continues to rake off the bench. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the over there because he could play second really well too. People don't know that. Like, Biggio struggles a little bit there, or anything along those lines. That's Ernie's spot. I'll go uh, over for Ernie. If he has to take some Bo Bichette innings again uh, and be the shortstop and play well there, I think he can, he can hit over 1.4. Yeah. Kevin Biggio, 1.1. 2B1, over. This is. The, I'm looking forward to watching Biggio this year. I am. I know, too, I know True RGM talks about the sandwich. Uh, I say fuck a sandwich, just all meat this year. No bad parts of the season. I think he's just consistently good this year. I'm not asking him to be the greatest hair on the planet. He's going to be the nine-hole guy or the eight-hole guy. Just do what you got to do, Biggio. Get on base for the boys and just score. That's what you got to do. Be a good base runner. I like I like that, too. I'll take his over. Daniel Vogelback, point eight Under. I don't... I. I don't know how long he'll be here, man. That That's what I yeah. put. I put the under as well because who knows? Uh, how long he'll be there for IKF 0.7 of a win. Okay. That's so disrespect. It's gotta be over. <laughs> that is so disrespectful. It's gotta be over, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wrote down over as well because I thought it was a hilarious line. I, I want to know what his numbers were though, because surely when he played for the Yankees, that full season, they couldn't have been that bad. Where I'm assuming you? they were fun. Isaiah Kiner Falafa. Here we go. Fan graphs on my homepage of my phone, man. Always always pays off here. Uh wins. 20 2021, 1.6, 2022, 1.5, and last year 0. 0.2. Yeah. I'll take his over if he's gonna play a lot. Yeah. Uh um, I think he is gonna play I was, a lot. I did say that I thought the thing would fail, but he can I have think he is gonna play a lot. 0. 0.8. I mean, they haven't slotted in to play third base yet against righties it seems like yeah um i don't know why i put this one in here but he's gonna be on the <laughs> opening day roster brian Servin, point one win under <laughs> i think he just doesn't i think he would maybe just land on point one i, I don't see him playing that much i love him though great guy we met him great he's dude. awesome yeah great dude i just don't think he's gonna play yeah i think he's up here for a little bit and then hopefully the other guys are healthy and put it in there. So I'll, I'll go under based on playing time reasons. But if it's wins above replacement from being like a guy's guy and someone you like, way over on that one. Yeah, way over. Great guy. Great vibes guy. Joy Votto, negative 0. 0.1 wins above replacement. Over. Like the disrespect, all right? God damn. I think Votto's going to be fine. We'll see. We've literally seen one fucking at bat. So I, I don't know where to gauge this. But, uh, Votto will be fine this year, all right? Positive vibes only. Yeah, I took the over as well for Joey Votto. <laughs> Wins above replacement. Over under ERA for starting pitchers. We will begin Kevin Gosman's projected ERA from Zips, 3.46. Under. He's a dog, dude. He's a he, dog. He's a dog. I have over 3.46. Landing on a three five is a, is going to be a fantastic season for him yeah. as well. Uh, With the strikeouts as well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a low number. He was really good last year as well. Pitching's tough, and to repeat that again is a tough thing to do. So I'll go over. Think he's really good though. Still, Jose Barrios has a projected ERA of four point one two. Under. 
I said he's going to be the best pitcher, so I have to say this, but I'm going to so go under with that. I re- I'm going to go under. I think he's sub four as well, like three eight for Jose Barrios this year. I think yeah. he's also going to be really good. Chris Bassett projected ERA three point eight four. That is low. Holy shit! I'm going to say under because he's my guy. Yeah, I'm just like we're we're riders. That's uh, we have to. We have but we're biased guys. I'm going to say under. Yeah, for how much uh, he's going to throw, it, 3.84 seems like a good number. I'm going to go under. He can still be a 3.7, 3.8 guy, throw a ton of innings, super, super valuable. Yeah. I'm going under ERA. Alec Manoa has a projected over. projected ERA of 4.47. Over. How hard was he throwing the other day? 96. Under. I don't know how you could sell a human being on the fact. I, I've seen him throw one inning this year. He can have a 4-4 four, four ERA and be under this. No, nah, I'm going to go over. I think Bowden steals that fifth spot where you can't move him, and Noah's like kind of in a clog a log jam. Yeah. All right. You say Kikuchi has a projected ERA of 4-3-8. I'm going to say over. 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, maybe. I also had the over on Kikuchi as well. Yeah, four, 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 five, which is um, still serviceable. That's still made a, a good number. Made a good point on him. Uh, whoever tweeted out his pitch mix that he was throwing his curveball a ton. He's not usually going to do that. So he's an old guy, man, who's been at it for a lot of years. It's a spring training thing. I don't think you worry about him. Yeah. Bowden Francis has a projected ERA of 4.31. I think I think the stuff's there. I think the under's there. I think the stuff is really there for Bowden Francis. I'm gonna have to go under. Okay. I'll go over a little over. Uh in a whole new whole new world starting in the big leagues. Tough league to pitch in. Yeah. Not necessarily think he's gonna be bad at all. Uh but I'll, I'll go over that one again. Yeah. Four, four four he can be at. Ricky Tiedemann has a projected ERA of four point zero nine. Oh my god. If he has under there, that like what a rookie year for Big Dick Rick. I'm gonna say over. I'm gonna lean probably like four two. I could see four three maybe, which again is still really good for a rookie first year in the big league. So this is not a knock on him. I just think he has like a four two or a four three, which and he's still gonna be really good. Yeah, I think the way they use him, if they're going to, is going to be in three inning spurts or something like that. Um, so if you have one bad blow up, you don't have the Chris Bassett, hey, here's nine scoreless innings against the Braves to take this ERA down. I'll go over because of that reason. But yeah. I think his season is looked positively uh, based on how it goes. Maybe the counting stats don't tell that full story, uh, but I'll go over his ERA. Still a good season. Yariel Rodriguez, over under 53 and a half innings for the Toronto Blue Jays this season. I'm drinking the Ariel Kool-Aid, folks. I really am. He has looked so good this spring. ERA down to two. Stuff is nasty. Faced the Orioles A squad yesterday. Faced all their big dogs. Rushman was in the lineup. Santander, Mullins, all the all their dogs were there, and he shoved. So I am buying the Ariel stock. I think he is a fucking freak. I really do. I think he finds his way into the rotation at some point this season. Yeah. So I'm gonna go over 53 and a half innings. Yeah. I think. So it's Ross Stripling two years ago in this. A uh, long man, but he goes to the rotation and saves him. Bound Francis, long man, didn't throw as much as Ross, never made it to the rotation, but is yeah. in the rotation, rotation next year. The rotation, yes. Thank you, Doc. Yuri Rodriguez is the long man into the rotation this season. He's yep. the next, I think he's the next in line. P- they paid him to do this, so it's not a surprise like some of the other ones, but I think he. They continue that line of people who are successful in that role and why Rod's the one to do it. Yep. Love Jordan Y-Rod. Romano, over 31 and a half saves this season. I hope it's less. I hope it's less, and I hope this team blows out teams more times than they did last year where I'm not sweating a save five times a week in a save, like a save situation. I hope we make it easier on these relief pitchers this year. So I'm going to say under 31 and a half saves because this offense picks it up and more games are won by bigger digits than they were last year. Bigger numbers was, than they were last year. That was an awesome year. spin zone. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I'll go under nervous about the arm injury. That's it. Elite 
elite reliever when he's playing. Uh, are there any other relievers on this team other than Jordan Romano with five or more saves? I think Jimmy could slot in there. Okay. Um, I think Jimmy can slide in there. I think Swanee could slide in there, but five saves is a pretty decent amount, though. Um, yeah. I think, I, I think I think anyone else had two or one last year. Okay. I think, but Romano didn't come in the last year a little bit banged up, though, right? So, no. uh, yeah, I, I could see another closer, another reliever having five saves for sure. Okay. I think they do closer by committee if they have to. So I'll say no. Any other relievers with more than five saves. All right. That's all I got for the people. That's all we got, boys. We are here, man. Avery, like, I just I I, I do we want do we want to do we want to preview? Do we have all the starters? For, no, we don't. We can't do it yet. Fuck. No, we can just do a preview for game one. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, Zach Eflin do- versus Jose Barrios. Uh, pretty much you'll be seeing the lineup we saw today. Uh, yeah. literally the exact same lineup. Uh, Zach Eflin is a sneaky good pitcher. I think. I think he's a sneaky good underrated pitcher, but. Based off of the Blue Jays' success on opening day, I, they I have played see. two of the craziest baseball games back-to-back opening days. So and I think that trend continues, Avery. I really do. Let's not forget the Texas game two years ago and then uh, <laughs> the Cardinals, whatever the fuck that game was last season as well. Uh, that, a million walks. I, that, that game was miserable to watch. Miserable. <laughs> Yeah, miserable to watch, and you're getting yelled at by Cardinals fans was awesome. I think the well. trend continues, though, Avery. I really do. Um, I'm gonna be betting. I, I, the, I'm gonna be betting the Blue Jays. I will be. I'll be betting the Blue Jays for the vibes. Uh, like, like we mentioned, we'll be we'll be there at St. Louis Bar and Grill. If you guys want to bet with the Blue Jays and ride with the boys, we wouldn't be opposed to that. But um, yeah, let let's have ourselves let's have ourselves a week. This is the last weekdays until October. We will not be having regular season baseball for the Toronto Blue Jays coming up. Let that sink in. <laughs> Verbal meme. Let that let that sink in. Blue Jays win song. We'll be dropping on Tuesday. What a track did we pick for the fucking boys? What a track. Uh, I'm so fucking excited, man. We got ball. All that grinding away, chipping away in the offseason is here. Uh, the boys will be playing regular season games on Thursday, and I cannot wait for it. We will talk to you guys Thursday. Uh the classic in-person podcast after the home opener or, or opening day sorry and uh, it'll be out the electric stay tuned for that and uh Avery any last words man we're here brother no we're here love you guys we made it finally go birds let's enjoy Thursday there we go